Kyle Larson is on another level. I think we can all for the most part agree that Martin Truex Jr. and Chase Elliott are the two best road course racers in the Cup Series today. And Kyle Larson destroyed them at their own game today, sweeping the stages. I'm at a loss for words at this point. He's, he's good anywhere, in anything. He has no weaknesses. How's it going y'all? My name is Eric and welcome to Out of the Groove. Toyota Sabart 350 Race Review Edition. It's great to see NASCAR back at Sonoma Raceway for the first time in two years. We're gonna talk about everything that happened in today's race. Kyle Larson's dominance, late race restarts, some tempers perhaps late in the race. We'll talk about all of that and more. But first, this episode is sponsored by Avalon King. They sent me a sample of their Armor Shield 9 ceramic coating to test out for myself. The Armor Shield 9 rejects UV rays, surface scratches, road grime, mud, pollen, acid, rain, bird drippings, and any other crud you might run into on the road. Give your car a professional shine and the world's highest scratch resistant rating. It's been on my car for a couple weeks and I've already noticed a difference. You know, rain will hit and the water droplets just slide right off the car. It's pretty cool actually. So this stuff really works. Check out the Armor Shield 9 made by Avalon King. It's easy to apply, it's easy to use. Check their link out down in the description below. Now, let's talk all things Sonoma. The third road course race of the season. Christopher Bell won at the Daytona road course. Chase Elliott recently won the rain shortened race at Circuit of the Americas. Who would emerge triumphant in Northern California? No surprises in the top three. You had the guy who's been the most consistently fast car and team all season long with Martin Truex Jr. who'd won the last two Sonoma races and Chase Elliott who's been the best road course racer statistically speaking in the Cup Series the last three seasons. So no real surprises in the top three other than maybe how they shuffled things amongst themselves. The fact that Larson got the win over Chase Elliott Martin Truex that might be a little bit surprising. Chase Elliott had won five of the last six road course races coming into this thing. Martin Truex, as I said, won the last two Sonoma races. So maybe it's a surprise that Kyle Larson didn't just beat them today, he whooped them today. Truex and Elliott never at any point in this race had as fast or faster a car than Kyle Larson did. From the drop of the green to the flying of the checkered, there was never any doubt in anyone's mind who the fastest car driver team was today. It was Kyle Larson from start to finish. That's maybe a bit surprising considering before this season started, Kyle Larson only had three career top tens in I believe 15 road course starts. Three for 15, that's just top tens. He now has a second place at Coda this year, a race that he might have won had it stayed green, had the rain not gotten heavier and called the race sooner. And now he has a win at Sonoma. So Kyle Larson in Hendrick Motorsports equipment is shattering all previous expectations. He collects his third win of the season, tying him with Martin Truex Jr. for the overall series lead, but he won his, I believe, ninth and 10th stages of the year. Actually, no, I think he's up to 11, 10th and 11th stages this year, which is by far the most in the cup series. So if we're talking about playoff points, it's Kyle Larson. You know, Martin Truex isn't too far behind, but boy, he has a big lead over over the rest of the field. This is a huge win because Kyle Larson, he grew up about an hour and a half away from Sonoma Raceway. This is his stomping grounds. This is his area of the country. He said in his post-race interview that he still considers Northern California to be home to him. So this may just look like another Cup Series win, but I do think there's more to that. You heard the crowd cheering pretty loudly for Kyle Larson when he got out of his race car. Sure, it was an exciting finish regardless, but Kyle Larson getting the win, I think was a favorite among the crowd in Northern California today. But focusing on Kyle Larson's season, he is on an absolute tear. A few weeks ago, we'd already kind of written off the regular season championship as you know, Denny Hamlin's. We'd put his name on the trophy already. Hamlin has been a little more inconsistent the last few weeks and Kyle Larson has found his groove. He's won the last two races. In fact, he swept all of the stages the last two weeks. So he's racking up stage points. He's racking up playoff points. He's racking up wins. He's closing in on Denny Hamlin for that regular season championship. So do not write Larson off yet. He may continue to add to his playoff point count. At this point in the season, I think it's safe to say Kyle Larson is the driver to beat. He doesn't seem to have weaknesses other than maybe super speedways where still throughout his career he has not had much luck, good fortune at super speedways. But aside from those, it doesn't matter. Short track, intermediates where they've been really strong this year, and now apparently road courses, Kyle Larson does not have a weakness. It helps that the Hendrick Motorsports Chevys are really, really fast. Chase Elliott finished second. It's the fourth straight race where Hendrick finished 1-2. So it certainly doesn't hurt that he's driving one of the, if not the fastest cars in the field every single week, but he's also not making many mistakes. You know, he has three wins this year. We've already talked about this. He also has four second place finishes. We're 16 races into the season, I believe. So that's seven out of 16 races he's finished 
first or second. That's nearly 50% of the events this year, and we're more than you know, midway through the regular season. That is crazy. No one ever really doubted his ability to drive a race car, but I did not expect this relationship with Hendrick Motorsports to get off to such a hot, hot start. Jeff Gluck tweeted during the race that the record for stage wins in a single season in the stage racing era, 2017 to now, is 19. It's been set by Martin Truex Jr. and Kevin Harvick. Larson is already at 11, and we're not even halfway through the entire season schedule. There are still 20 races to go. He is on pace to shatter that record. So stage winner K... FL. I mean, he's earned that middle name at this point. Big win for Kyle Larson. The top three of Larson, Chase Elliott, and Martin Truex Jr. Second week in a row where a JGR car is right there, but not quite. Very deserving top three. They were the three best drivers, fastest cars all day long. Let's take a look at the top finishers from Sonoma Raceway. This is presented by Redneck Riviera. Joey Logano was really the only Penske driver to show up today. Brad Keselowski may have been in the mix, but during their final pit stop, they had equipment over the wall too soon and cost any track position they might may have made up. Kyle Busch had plenty of damage on that 18 car, but he comes home fifth. It got bailed out by like the third or fourth to last yellow flag. They were going to have to pit again for fuel after overusing their tires early in the run, but those late race yellows set them up nicely to get a good finish. Chip Ganassi racing with a much, much, much needed good day today. After finishing last and second to last last week, both Kurt Busch and Ross Chastain get solid top tens here today. There were a few big moments late in this race and Ross Chastain was in the middle of one of them. We got one of those good old fashioned turn 11 stack ups at Sonoma race way that we've been missing all these years. <laughs> Ross Chastain with fresher tires than Corey LaJoy dove it in kind of late going into that hairpin turn. LaJoy came down not expecting Chastain to be there. They made contact, stacked the field up. Byron, Harvick got ser serious damage. Bowman got damage as well. Didn't hurt Ross Chastain too bad. He really only lost like one position in the whole endeavor, but still was Chastain being too aggressive? It was certainly a late dive bomb for sure. But as Jeff Gordon mentioned during the Fox booth, he did have much fresher tires than LaJoy, so he was able to break a bit later. LaJoy probably should have been more aware of who was behind him and the faster cars that were coming. Still looked like an over-aggressive move from Chastain in my opinion, so I don't know. Typical Chastain stuff. Late in the race, going for it. I don't blame him. Ran a smart race. Ran a good race the rest of the time. Second road course race in a row now that he's gotten a top 10 finish. He was fourth at Coda a few weeks ago, so good run for Chastain and Chip Ganassi. Hamlin Bowman with a lot of damage on that 48 car somehow ends up with a top 10. Bowman drove through a few cars there, one of those late race restarts. Got in the back of, I think it was Alfredo and Bell. That set off one of those late race cautions. It was unclear if Bowman was getting hit by somebody. It was kind of just a, a stack up on the restart going into you know the turn before the carousel. Not not sure if that was really his fault, but he had some damage. Still gets a good top 10, so a good day for Hendrick. Byron being in the garage was the only blemish. Top 10 for Blaney. Eric Jones ends up 11th and Richard Petty equipment. Really good day for him. Daniel Suarez ends up 12th. He uh, he gave uh, Michael McDowell the boot in the final corner of this race. Turn 11, that hairpin turn. Looked like he just overdrove it. Drove right through the 34. Spun McDowell around. McDowell might have had a top 10 run going. They didn't show any fights or altercations afterwards. Maybe someone will find a clip or something on Twitter because those two guys have a history. You'll remember qualifying a couple years ago at Phoenix, they got into a, a mini brawl on pit road. And I mean, I love Daniel Suarez. They had a great race going today. I don't know why he drove through McDowell like that. He, he, he has something coming, I think. Still a solid finish for Suarez, all things considered. Austin Dillon, man, it felt like every time I saw him on pit road, they were having trouble with the tires. They had engine issues or a battery issue at one point. He bounced back to get a 13th place finish. Speaking of resilience, Bubba Wallace spent most of this race 35th a lap down. He got the free pass, one of those late race yellows, got some great restarts, dodged a lot of the car. He gets a top 15 with Michael Jordan in attendance. That's right, MJ, the GOAT, was at Sonoma Raceway today. The first race, I believe, this season he has attended in person. So that's pretty cool to have a pretty solid result in front of the boss. A few other notable finishers. Another terrible day for Stuart Haas Racing. Briscoe ends up 17th. Custer 20th. Kevin Harvick, I mentioned, got damage. 22nd. Eric Almarola was back in 27th. There was another big incident late in this race when Ryan Priest and Cody Ware made heavy, heavy contact through the uh, back S, backstretch S's portion of the track. Not entirely sure what happened on the replay. Maybe De Benedetto got into the back of Ryan Priest. Either way, Priest spun out into the dust, into the dirt, off track, and then gassed it up right back in front of traffic and collected an unexpected Cody Ware. Huge wreck. I don't know what Ryan Priest was doing there. I don't know where the breakdown of communication was. If his spotter told him he could come back on the track because there were several cars still coming with a full head of steam. Whether his spotter told him to go back out there or if Priest just in a moment of rage or not know where, where he was on the track decided to pull back out there. You know, either way, that was dangerous and I, I think Ryan Priest should get a talking
talking to for that one because uh, Ware did not deserve to have his car destroyed in that in that event. It could have been a whole lot worse. But those are your top finishers right there from Sonoma. The next road course on this schedule, I believe, is July 4th weekend. Road America. I'm going to be there. I can't wait. Jockey Made in America 250. That's going to be fun. We still have, what, four more road courses on the schedule this year. Going to be a busy, busy summer. But there you have your top finishers from today's race. The last thing we have to talk about in this episode is the racing itself. I'm not going to harp on the broadcast today. I did that plenty last week. This is also Fox's final points paying broadcast of the season. NBC will pick things up beginning with Nashville here in about two weeks. The all-star race next week at Texas is on FS1, but you know that's not a points paying race. Anyway, so Fox's portion of the schedule is all but complete. Next up is NBC. We'll see what kind of stops NBC pulls out this year, but I'm not going to harp on the broadcast. There are things I like today. There are plenty of things I did not like. Many of the same things I I vented about in a couple different episodes last week, so we're not going to get into that today. The racing action on track, what we saw of it at least, I thought was fantastic today. You know, first time back at Sonoma in two years. It's never been my favorite road course on the schedule, but boy, felt like throughout this race, there was passing, there was side by side, there was action, there were guys running into each other, bent up fenders. I had a lot of fun with this race today. This is probably the most fun race in a few weeks. We've kind of had a, a dry spell where, no, well, Coda was not dry, but <laughs> not in a literal sense at least, but the racing was kind of eh at Coda. It was eh last weekend. At Charlotte, it was eh at Dover. It was, you know, it, it, we've had a few weeks in a row of just kind of you know, going through the motions, just average NASCAR races. Today felt like something more. We didn't have any super long runs in this race. We had a few moderate long runs in this race, and we definitely had plenty of opportunities for varying pitch strategy. I'm still split about stage racing at road courses. Assign them the points, but maybe we don't need to have caution flag periods at road courses. I don't like how teams are forced to pick between collecting the stage points they earned or setting themselves up for the end of the race better. You know, I think that's super duper lame. But at the same time, with those couple of cautions sprinkled in throughout this race, it allowed for some different pitch strategy. It allowed for, you know, the fast cars to work their way through the field numerous times. So we saw Kyle Larson, Truex, Elliott passing a ton of cars, and that was really fun to watch. So I am torn on that topic, but we saw great racing today. The final 20, 30 laps were a lot of cautions, a lot of restarts, but the top three, Larson, Elliott, Truex, for most of those restarts at least, did their jobs. They got the field up through the gears cleanly. They ran off and duked it out amongst themselves. Some carnage ensued behind them. I thought NASCAR kind of whiffed on the Anthony Alfredo spin. I don't think that should have been a caution, but you know, it didn't end up blowing things up. The next restart was pretty smooth and you know, Kyle Larson still went on to win. So it didn't hurt the race at the end of the day, but I thought that was a bad call. Other than that, I thought NASCAR officiated this race pretty well. There's a little question early on after I think uh, stage one or stage two, when maybe they threw the pit road closed light on too soon. And that threw Chase Elliott's team strategy off a little bit. I'm not really sure. I saw Bob Hockris reported that NASCAR reviewed it and said, no, they turned the light on when they were supposed to. So I, I'm not really sure what happened there. Overall, I thought procedurally, this was a very well executed race and the action was great. So for a NASCAR road course race at what has previously been kind of an underwhelming road course on the NASCAR schedule. I loved what I saw out there today. I hope you guys did too. I really enjoyed the vast majority of this race here today. I was never really bored, even when Kyle Larson had a four or five second lead, because more often than not, there was somebody on a varying strategy that I knew was going to have a shot at the lead before long, or we had those late race restarts as well. So I thought today's race was really, really good. Let's put it on the groovy gauge. I'm going to give this race at Sonoma Raceway an 80%, a very, very enjoyable NASCAR Cup Series event. Event. You know, when people read the Wikipedia entry of, for this race years from now and they see, oh, Kyle Larson won stage one, won stage two, won the race, oh, he's been dominating, you know, they might think this was a boring race, but for a race that was dominated on paper by Kyle Larson, it was very, very enjoyable. And even on those final restarts, Chase Elliott was, was there. If Larson had bobbled at all, Chase Elliott was going to have a shot to take advantage. I don't know, to me, a race that has a ton of action, a ton of passing, a ton of varying strategies, and the top three best cars, best drivers all day long get the win or, you know, run up front, finish on the podium. To me, this is a great race. If, you know, on one of those late race restarts, Kyle Larson got dumped by, you know, Corey LaJoy or Anthony Alfredo or Joey Legar, one of those drivers that were on older tires up there. If he just gets dumped and wrecked and it's like, oh, what are we doing? Then, you know, that might have left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. But the fact that the most deserving teams got the finishes they deserved up front 
front, and we still got some great action throughout the field, throughout the race. I don't see what you could dislike about this one. 80% for me on the groovy gauge. Let me know what you'd give this race down below. That is gonna do it for today's episode of Out of the Groove. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. We talk NASCAR day in and day out, race reviews, predictions, talking about news, rumors, all that and more. And of course, a huge thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters as well. We will be back this week. Plenty to talk about before the all-star race at Texas. Summer is heating up. I'll be on the road here in just a couple of weeks. I'll be out of town for several weeks, going to a few different NASCAR races. Gonna show you guys a lot of stuff while I'm out on the road. I can't wait for that. So we'll be getting out of the studio pretty soon for a little uh, summer vacation. Well, a vacation where I will be working quite a bit, but it'll be a fun working vacation. I can't wait. I'm excited to share it with you guys. Thanks for watching this episode. I'll see you again very, very soon.